Is Photoshop on the web actually more powerful than Photoshop on the iPad? That can't be true. Then again, why would I ask? Here I am inside Photoshop on the web. Now, your first question might be why? Why in the world does this even exist? Well, accessibility, of course. So you don't have to have Photoshop installed on the machine you're using in a library, for example, something like that. You can just go ahead and log in. I'll explain that in a second. Secondly, uh, Adobe is saying right now that it's going to be free, free for all. I think it's it's supposed to be sort of the idea is that it'll get the kids hooked on Photoshop, don't you know? Right now, however, you have to be logged in. You have to be a paying customer, and that's because it's in beta, as you can see in the top left corner. All right, so how do you get to the darn thing? Photoshop.adobe.com, by the way at which point you'll be invited to open a cloud file. Each file is going to appear in an independent tab, by the way. All right, so I happen to be working in Chrome on the PC, for what that's worth. The fact that it's Chrome is very important. Photoshop on the web requires Chromium, which means Chrome, Microsoft Edge. It was most notably, Safari ain't gonna hack it, by the way, and that's because Safari relies on WebKit, and so you're not going to be able to, you can open an image. You just can't do anything with it. You can't edit it. You can add comments and that's it. And this goes for iOS as well, iPad or iPhone. Even if you're using Chrome on a device, on an iOS device, I haven't checked Android, but iOS, then you're still relying on Safari in a background, WebKit at any rate. All right, so that takes care of the upfront stuff. I'm going to press F11 to hide that junk at the top of the screen. And now we're going to do a countdown. Join me, won't you? As I count down a dozen, even dozen features that are available inside Photoshop on the web that inexplicably are not available inside on, on Photoshop for the iPad. I don't know why. They should be. First, right at the top of the list, number 12. We'll start there, and then we'll build up to the more the most important stuff. So stick with me. Or skip ahead. It's up to you. But this, right away, this is good. Uh, zoom in with Control Plus, Command Plus on the Mac. Zoom out with Control or Command Minus. If you want to zoom to 100%, that's Control or Command 1. 200% is 2, by the way. And then I can just scroll up, by the way, also Speaking of, by the way, I can press the space bar to get the hand tool on the fly. And then I could press Control or Command Zero to fit the image on screen. So familiar, if you like familiar Photoshop stuff, you're going to dig Photoshop on the web much more than the iPad version. Because at number 11, we have a familiar looking layers panel. Instead of that bizarre hybrid of layers and properties and the stuff that's going on, hogging the the right hand side of the screen on the ipad it's i think it's because it's supposed to be touch friendly but i don't find it to be touch friendly really necessarily i find it to be bewildering oftentimes but let's say you want to turn off the horse layer right here you just click its eyeball it's right there it isn't with some weird location over here on the right hand side of the screen it's right there and just turn the eyeball off turn it back on for example if you want to and, and, you know, if you want to get to adjustment layers, they're right there. Familiar icon once again. And if you want to create a new layer, you click on it. That works on the iPad too, but you could tap on the plus. But that's how you get to adjustments as well, which is odd. Anyway, let's say, let's say you want to change the size of the thumbnails. You can do that. It, it's, you can right-click on layers, by the way, if you want to. And you'll get, you know, a bunch of stuff available to you. That's kind of available on the iPad. It's not a right click, but whatever. And then layer actions. Notice this right down here at the bottom. We have large layer thumbnails as by default. If you want to make them tiny, because you have a lot of layers, why you choose that command to make them tiny. So it's up to you how you want to work. I'm going to switch back to large so we can keep track of, of what's going on here. Here's another thing. This is number, I'm calling this number 10. We've got an options bar up here at the top of the screen which is horizontal, yay, and it, it it's uh, context sensitive according to the active tool. And it's very much the experience that you get in regular old everyday average, super powerful real Photoshop, right? Well, you don't have to have it up here at the top of the screen. If for some reason you lose your mind and you want it to be like on the iPad and you want it to be over here next to the toolbox, you click on this thing right here and it'll move it 
<laughs> uh, for starters, before you move your cursor, it's going to be under the tools then you can move your cursor out of the way. And it's here. You can see all those same functions presented to you kind of like they are on the iPad. So if you're going for the iPad experience here on the web, you, know, well, you, you have that. Or you can collapse the panel, which actually sends it to the top of the screen. So I'm not sure that's a collapse. You also have a keyboard shortcut of Shift Escape will switch between those two in case you're taking some notes. Number nine, we have a feature that just made it into the actual shipping version of Photoshop shipping in quotes fingers, quote fingers that is, which is, uh, well, double quotes here in the States, of course. So I guess it is quotes fingers, but it's this thing right here, the contextual taskbar, which it, it just appeared in, in Photoshop 24.5. And so you may or may not like it. Some people are going to love it. Some people are not going to love it so much. It's another contextual thing. And I like the options bar, but it has other contexts. So for example, you could easily get to select subject. Now, the iPad kind of has a floating bar down here at the bottom under certain circumstances after you create a selection, for example. Whereas the select subject is right here. So it's just like in Photoshop, just like in the actual Photoshop, which I think should be the criteria, you know, the criterion that is that, that we're ascribing to is to make it like the actual Photoshop, don't you think? Anyway, select subject, and then that's going to look at the horse face right here. It's going to select it to some degree of, of, of accuracy. And then we have create mass. That's also, the, now at this point, you would see a kind of bar at the bottom of the iPad. But this thing, now the reason people aren't gonna love contextual taskbar that much is because it hops around. It's always, it's just too needy is the thing. It's just, it's so eager to please. Did you just see it hop right there? It's just, it always wants to get in or out of your way. I'm not sure which, but anyway, it is there. And then I just added a mask, of course, to my horse face right there. So, you know, you may love it. You may not love it. Here's something that I think is great. This is feature number eight, totally missing from Photoshop for the iPad up here. Notice this guy, the hamburger, that brings up a familiar menu, which I think is like, yeah, okay, that's nice. That's great because you can find like all your edit commands. You can you can find, by the way, new and open if you want to work that way because you can't do control or command N or you get the idea or O because those are otherwise used by the browser itself. So they don't have shortcuts, but they have these little commands right here. And then we've got, you know, the standard stuff with their com with their keyboard shortcuts listed, by the way, to help you out. So if you're ever trying to figure out where's the cut command, is it available to me? I don't have to go looking for a pair of scissors someplace, which is not cut by the way that you know whatever anyway so it's it's here and you can see that free transform has a slightly different keyboard shortcut control alt t command option t and that's because uh control command t does something else in the browser i don't know what so you you, you get the idea so you, you can burrow around you have settings you could choose the settings command to bring up this guy and you could switch to the light interface ow no 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 never anyway i'll switch it back there's our thumbnail size by the way if you want to switch to medium or large and then if you know you're 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 up there in 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 the wisdom category you can switch the size of the interface to large so you have very large they should really have for the kids they should have a dinky you know, for the, the kids with a really great eyesight. Anyway, the near vision, that is. I'm going to close this. So here we are reviewing a dozen ways in which Photoshop on the web absolutely trounces Photoshop on the iPad. But don't you kind of wish it was a baker's dozen? Well, good news, it is. And lucky number 13 is the most essential of them all, which is why I devote an entire video to the topic at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash teaknow. And now subscribe, turn on notifications, and let's get right back into it right there what what's coming what is what's at number seven do you suppose well we have familiar layers panel keyboard shortcuts that just kind of just don't actually exist on the ipad for some reason and so if if you if you want to for example move a layer up up higher then you can press control with a bracket key. For example, this is right bracket, this is in control left bracket. So instead of dragging, you know, that's an option if you want to. We've got something like, well, let's say 
I'm thinking, what, what, what about, what about, what about alt clicking in order to alt clicking on the, the horizontal thing between layers in order to create a clipping mask. So let, I'm going to add an adjustment by clicking on that familiar black white icon. It's not at the bottom of the panel. It's at the top, but that's okay. And I'm going to just choose brightness contrast because it's a little bit brain dead and I'll click in a value. Oh, I have numerical control. This isn't even one of my numbered items. I'm still on number seven familiar keyboard shortcuts, but I can just like press an up arrow key in order to increase that value or shift up arrow in order to increase it in increments of 10. Can I tab to the next value? Yes, I can. So I don't have to just sit there and drag like a buffoon. And so I can, you know, I have numerical control, which is really great. And then watch it. It's, it's, I don't know if you saw that here. I'll click on that guy again. Notice that clip adjustment layer is turned on by default. So that's just a default setting on both the Mac and, I mean, both the iPad and the web. Mac and PC? No, it's not. But notice, see that little thing right there? I can alt or option click on it in order to make it apply to everything so it's not clipped anymore. And then alt or option click again in order to clip it to this layer. And then if I want to get rid of that layer mask because it's not doing me any good, I can press the backspace key. You can't do that on the iPad, even with a keyboard. And, and, and you can do things like press the backspace key to get rid of an entire layer if you want to. I kind of like that layer sitting right there. So I'll leave it turned on. What's next, do you suppose? Well. Speaking of keyboard shortcuts, because we're also very fond of them, maybe, you can press mash your fist K, which doesn't allow you to modify keyboard shortcuts the way it does in Photoshop proper. So that's Control, Shift, Alt, or Command, Shift, Option, K, by the way. It just brings up a list of keyboard shortcuts, including the one I just told you right there. And then you can do things like start a search. I'll show you that in just a second. And you can just kind of plow through this list and look at every single shortcut that is available to you in this surprisingly capable program right here. All right, I'm going to click done or you can escape out. But that still leaves this help up right now. I don't want that. So it's taking up too much room. And I'll get rid of that. I was mentioning the keyboard shortcut of control slash. Wasn't that it? Command slash. And that's going to bring up a little search function that doesn't exist on the iPad. So far as I know, I can't find it. And I'll just enter dupe and you could, there's a duplicate layer command. And there's good old layer via copy new which is better expressed as Control-J or Command-J for jump. So that works. That works on the iPad too, but I just want you to see that if, if you're searching around for something, then you can press a keyboard shortcut, slash, Control or Command slash. All right. Hey, we're working on a computer, right? And so you might find drag and dropping to be useful. So I have this little folder open in Explorer, Finder on the Mac, and I can just drag and drop directly into my browser running Photoshop in order to uh, uh, place that image. It's not going to come in as a smart object, which is, I can't, I can't locate any real smart object functions inside the software, whereas inside the web. Um, whereas on the iPad, it, you, you do have better smart object control. But anyway, it does respect smart objects. This guy right here is a smart object, as indicated by its little page icon. And this one's a generative fill layer right there and it's respected you can't do anything special with it but anyway i can drag this guy around i can rotate him as well and then i could press the escape key because i actually don't want to place an owl on top of a horse i can't think of any reason to do that offhand that was did i am i keeping track of the numbers so number seven was familiar layer shortcuts number six was mash your fist k number five was drag and drop directly into an image well here's number four so I'm just going to, I'm just going to switch to the lasso tool right here, which you can get by pressing the L key. Did I do it successfully? I did not. There it is. All right. And on, I'm just going to drag around the horse's face uselessly. I'm not doing anything special, but I want you to see, sure. You got these things that allow you to add to the selection, subtract from the selection and so forth, but you can press the shift key and drag to add. You can't do that right now on the iPad. You can press the alter option key and drag to uh, subtract from the selection. So shift added subtract is alter option. And then you can press shift and alt and you can drag in order to find an intersection. That would be shift and option on the Mac. So that's at number four, just those very, very standard shortcuts or keyboard techniques, I guess you call them there on the, uh, actual Photoshop control or command D to deselect. 
And there's, this gives you an idea for, come on, contextual taskbar, as you're known, just stay put, wouldn't you? All right, next. Now, this is number three. We're getting into some serious territory here. Blend modes. you got those on the iPad, all 27 of them that you can assign to a layer. But here on a web, you can preview them on the fly. So there's dark and there's light. And what do I have selected? I have the bad layer selected. Let's go to the horse. That's going to make more sense, of course. And so there's darken preview on the fly. There's multiply. There's light and there's screen. That's pretty cool. It's a ghost horse. So and, 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 and so if there's any of these guys, you're just like, I have no idea what pin light does. Well, give it a shot and you can just preview it on the fly without actually try before you buy, as it were. That is number three. Number two, this is getting very, very major, by the way, non-destructive crop. I can't for the life of me figure out why cropping on the iPad as it stands right now is absolutely permanent. It, it, it completely deletes pixels, which is deranged by any measure. But anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch the crop tool. So it does have the standard keyboard shortcut of C. It's in a different place than it is anywhere else, but still here it is. And now you can go ahead and change your crop boundary just as you might. You have, you know, the aspect ratio controls and all that kind of stuff that you can work with as well. And then you can drag inside to move the horse inside the crop boundary and so forth. Anyway, I'm just going to press the enter key in order to accept that crop. It's going to take a moment, as you can see there, but it doesn't permanently delete anything. Now, there used to be an option. I, I'm just going to show you. I'll switch back to the crop tool. You can see that nothing's deleted. It's still there so that I can change my crop boundary some more if I am so inclined. On the iPad, it is a dangerous feature. Uh, up There used to be, somewhere up here, there used to be a thing that allowed you to delete if you wanted to, but now it's just off. So now you just don't delete. All right, so we'll just accept that once again. Actually, it's cropping. All right, you you can undo multiple undos, but of course, so Control or Command Z a few times, a couple times. And finally, at number one, we have rulers for one thing. So it's Alt or Option R to bring up the rulers. So just so you know, don't hit Control R or Command R necessarily on on the on the Mac because it's going to reload in chrome anyway it's going to reload the image which can be quite dangerous notice up here in the in the title you can see a little asterisk which means we have unsaved changes and i'll get back to that but it's just something to bear in mind just something to think about before you just go close in a tab because you're done working inside of an image make sure you don't see the asterisk it it, it is going to go away on, on its own because you know photoshop is auto saving to the cloud however if for some reason, you want to force the save before you close the tab. Choose the save command. It's dim for me because the changes are saved. All right. Hey, you're wondering, what about guidelines? You can drag out a guide. Let me just make sure. No, I selected the image. I didn't drag from the ruler in a way that it was happy with. I'm still not in a way that it's happy with. Come on. What is the problem here? Let's, do, let's try a different tool. I'll switch to the move tool and I'll drag the horse to move it around. All right. Why are you making such a liar of me? Photoshop on the web. Well, I'll try bringing back the rulers. So that's alt or option R once again, you can, you can do this. By the way, this is totally possible. Okay. I don't know why it's not cooperating. I'll switch to a different open image that I have right here. There's an unknown error. It, 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 you know, reload. Maybe that's the problem is we have an unknown error. You can refresh Photoshop by pressing F5, I believe is going to work. Anyway, I'll try bringing up the rulers for this guy. Alter option R and I'll drag out. Yes, this works. See, you can drag out guides. You can also move the guides as long as you have the move tool active. I think that's necessary. Now, you may not like the guide color, of course, in which case you can go back to that settings command that we saw a moment ago from the hamburger, and then you can go to grids, uh, guides, grid, and ruler. So there's grids as well, and you can click on the color right there and just change the G value to 255. And that way you're getting cyan, good old familiar cyan, and then just close out, and you should have some cyan guidelines.
And that, friends, ends my top 12 countdown. But I will say one more thing. Here's another thing that's exclusive to Photoshop on the web right now. I just don't happen to like it. It's this thing right here, Quick Actions. And it kind of runs through a kind of action, a kind of pre ordained action set and so it's it's interesting in that for example let's say i just say i want to darken that is this just going to darken this one layer so so that's no good so i'll undo it right there just revert is what you do to undo the multiple things that were applied i want you to see what's going on just in case you have any interest there's an etch a sketch and so this will be a little more indicative and i'll 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 click on darken and it should darken up the etch -a sketch so very slightly. And notice it's a static layer. It just ended up making a static layer. Now you can undo the whole thing with that revert button right there, or you can undo incrementally and you'll see one undo gets me an etch -a sketch copy. We, it applied to curves, this dopey curves adjustment that barely did anything. If I wanted to really darken this, I, this etch -a sketch, that is, I would really go for it and so forth. So in other words, it's, 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 it's made for noobs is basically what it comes down with. Want to see me mock it some more? Sure you do. And so I'll go ahead and switch. Let's switch back to the horse. Why don't we? Because it's a little more indicative. I'll press control one in order to zoom all the way in there, get rid of the rulers. And I will go to this guy because this is interesting. This makes me hopeful. There's one called Sharpen. And as you may know, Photoshop on the iPad doesn't really have filters. It's got Gaussian Blur. The same goes for Photoshop on the web. It's got Gaussian Blur. That's it. That's the only one you have control over. Whereas, here's Sharpen. It doesn't really, there is really no sharpening in this program. And it will sharpen things ever so slightly. But you just don't have control over it. Did you see the sharpening? I, I, would, I would imagine not here. Oh, darn. Here we go, spacebar drag, and then I'll just go ahead and zoom in. And so this is what things look like without that sharpen layer, and this is how they look with that sharpen layer. So it just doesn't make much difference. If you're familiar with the sharpen command in Photoshop that nobody needs Adobe anywhere ever, then you know where that comes from. Anyway, I'll just go ahead and delete that. I just want you to know that there is something else that Photoshop for the web has uniquely in all the Photoshop world, in all this, the Photoshop verse there is. However, I don't really think all that much of it, but I love my top 12s, starting with zooming from the keyboard and ending with being able to drag out custom guides when that feature works, which it's not in this image. I don't know why. That's why it's called Photoshop Beta for the web. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Now, what we saw is something very close to a legitimate version of Photoshop running on the web, but it still needs that one more thing. What is it? Oh, I know, and you will too when you join me at patreon.com slash deke now. Then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.